Uh, by the way, just for people's information, Mr. Nfume had uh, something else that he had to go. So Ms. Norton is sitting in as the ranking member. And Ms. Norton, thank you very much. Pleased to do it. Uh, as the uh, member of Congress from Washington, D.C., you have a lot riding on not just the success of people being at work, but the success of uh, many constituents, and we respect that very much. Uh, we now move to uh, the distinguished gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Higgins, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, ma'am, gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Somewhat of a hot seat you're in as we attempt to effectively review the impact of teleworking on the federal bureaucracies is what we're targeting here. It's like your, your sworn service to the citizenry of, the, of America. And as representatives, you know, a large part of our work that, that the ladies and gentlemen, both sides of the aisle up here, are very dedicated to is constituent services. So when we're referencing failures within the bureaucracies, don't take this personally, but it's very personal to our constituents because it's their lives. And Mr. McNally, you're in the hottest of the hot seats right now because Social Security, you know, our elders, it, it's some of our most vulnerable, most alone. They, they generally shy away from, shall we say, cyber skills and online applications. These things are, it can be overwhelming to our elders. They're dealing with health issues and loneliness. And, and when their Social Security payments are interrupted, or they have to go through what you would say was a reasonable, or this is our process, and it's online, and it's electronic, and it's 21st century, and it's modern, it's efficient. To them, it's like a brick wall they can't get past. And this is where human contact is incredibly important. And I would, I would suggest that to all of my fellow Americans that serve one of the alphabet bureaucracies of our nation, let me say that teleworking, although it certainly has its place, you know, we, we got used to the virtual thing. Some of us never liked it, but we got good at it during COVID. And there's no doubt it has its place in our evolving society and the workforce. But as you shift towards teleworking, as we approach the quantum era, you're one step away from being replaced by AI. Because if there's no requirement for human-to-human -human contact, why do we need a human at home as we approach AI? Think about that. Because we're, cons we're discussing this in Congress. When a, when a human being working in your office needs to consult with another human being, and they're in the office, Mr. McNally, can they not walk a few feet to the next desk and say, would you take a look at this, or what's your opinion on that? Doesn't that happen? Yes, it does. So with teleworking, wouldn't that human-to-human -human interaction be interrupted? So I, I agree that this is a people business, and that we need to be connected to your constituents and make sure that they get the services they need. But okay, services they need. Not to interrupt you, but this is not the Senate, so they limit us to five minutes. Which they're pretty smart about that, by the way. In, in your opening statement, sir, you, you, I'm quoting you, she's, you quote, strong performance management and accountability. You say employees have been working a combination of on-site work and telework to meet the evolving needs of the public. You say our ability to move work electronically and provide seamless service allows us to operate more efficiently. Um, but my caseworkers tell me, and some of these ladies have been on the job for a long time. They have no reason to lie to me. Wait times for processing is increased. In some cases, they're waiting a year 
to get answers. From. So you're telling Congress that, that you're rolling, man, you're efficient, and teleworking is helping. By the way, we need more money, but wait times are getting longer and longer. So I give you the remainder of my time to please respond to that. How do you match what you're describing as your efficiency and performance with what we're seeing in the field back home? Thank you for your question. I think the principal contributing factors to what we're experiencing in the field offices is a combination of what we saw during the pandemic as well as years and years of understaffing in our field offices. But to your point about the person-to-person -person contact, what I would offer to you is that our field office employees, 26,000 strong, who see the public in person, those individuals report on site at least three days a week. So we value the in-person connection that we have with your constituents and want to serve them as effectively as possible. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my time has expired, but let me just close by saying three days a week is what we used to call a week off. And, and that, that's sort of the mentality that we're, that we're combating here, and we're respectfully trying to address. Mr. Chairman, I yield. Distinguished gentleman uh, yields back his time. Distinguished gentleman from Florida, Mr. Frost, recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Federal agencies carry out critical missions of all kinds, protecting us from those who